Hello and welcome to the second session on miscellaneous functions and we're going to start with the function str todd or str2 double and you can see from the prototype this function returning a double there taking as argument a character string and then we have char star star n now what that is we will see shortly converts a string representation of a number stored in a string pointed to by start into a double and returns the result but how does it work? So first of all, this function will strip any white space in the string, pointed to by start. Then it will take each character that constitutes the number and read it. It will stop reading when it encounters a character that cannot be part of a double or a floating point number. And then it will report the remainder. Right? So now let's go and look at a demonstration of this before we actually get on with writing some code right so this code you don't need to write so here we just have hashtag include stdio.h and hashtag include stdlib.h and hashtag include ctype.h because we're going to be using a function called is digit so int main and we have char star start and let's have char star details equal to and we just have char star end here double result and we'll have start equal to details right so we've initialized the point to start and now what we'll do is we'll just say result equal to str dot and pass in start and we've got to pass in the address of end so ampersand end then we just say printf result percentage f and then comma result and you can print f remainder as well so remainder of string percentage s backslash n comma end so now if I run this, you see it's taken that number printed out as the result and then the remainder of the string is whatever is left. Now if we want to extract this amount as well, of course we'll have to have a loop in which case after this point we can say while star start, meaning while start is not equal to null and this will be in the code block or in the loop right for that while right now here we will say after this point we will say start equal to end right so after the first result is printed out our pointer will be here right and so it needs to read all these characters so what we do here is we'll say while not is digit star start right that's one condition and we've got to take care of the fact that start should not be null so and star start right and within that we can just say start plus plus so now let's run this and you can see the first it prints out that 120 then the remainder of the string now because we've put in the additional code where it's reading right all the non digits going past those and then you know printing out the rest so 130 and then the remainder of the string is 4 microphone 
Right, so I hope you understood how this works. Right, any questions you can post in the comments. Now moving on to write our code. You have a list in string format which includes description of items along with their prices. You need to print out just the prices. Right, so let's go now to code blocks and we can start a new file. And we start with hashtag include stdio.h, hashtag include stdlib.h, and hashtag include ctype.h. Int main. And we'll have here char star start. Right, and we have char star prices, or rather, you can just call it details equal to, and then we'll also have a char star in, so you can include that here itself. Right, and now we'll initialize start, so start equal to details. Then we can see while star start. Now remember the price is after this description, right? So we got to move the code around a bit. So here we see our while loop, which is while not is digit because it's got to read all these characters in order to get to that price. Right, so while not is digit star start right and star start right and here we just see start plus plus after this we'll just print f percentage f backslash n right comma str dot and pass in start and ampersand end and then of course start equal to end and then that loop continues so now we run this and there you have the prices right we haven't printed out remainder because we don't need it you can if you want to within the loop right now if you don't want that many zeros you know what to do you can just say for example 4.2 f right and then you will not get those zeros or those additional zeros so i hope that's clear now moving on how does strtod work Right, so I just put that same code that we wrote just now and as I said when we were writing the code it's reading past all these characters and then when it reaches here it's going to report this particular floating point number or floating point value right as the result and then within the loop read again right so while not is digit it reads again up until this point and then reports this value right and so on okay so i hope it's clear as to how string to double works now coming to string to long or str tall you can see from the prototype this function returns a long value taking as argument start end and an additional argument called radix so here you need to provide the base it can be anything from 2 to 36 converse a string representation of a number stored in string or into by start into a long base of the number is determined by radix radix must be in the range 2 to 36 works the same as str tod or str to double right so no code for this one 
coming on to the next function which is the system function and we have used this before you can see from the prototype this function returns an integer and takes as argument a string pointer passes the string pointed to by str as a command to the command processor of the operating system and as i said we've used this before return value is zero on success and non-zero on failure so now we're going to write some code write a function that will accept path as argument and print out the contents of the directory on screen okay so let's go to code blocks again and we start a new file so hashtag include stdio.h then hashtag include stdlib.h and hashtag include string.h because we're going to be using mem double cpy now we have a function declared so void print dir and we're going to pass in char star path okay and then int main and within this you just call our function passing in a path so you can put in any path you like i'm going to put in just the path for my username when you're using backslash you need to include two of those in the string right and then backslash again and my username you can use your username or you can choose whichever path you like for which you want to display the contents of the directory so now that that's done we can also use exit right and you can use that in the previous program as well and now that we know the macro exit success we can use that and instead of saying exit zero now let's define our function so void print dir and the parameter coming in is char star path Here we have char str of 100 bytes equal to dir and a space. So this, if you're not already aware, is a system command. And when we want to see the contents of the directory, we start by writing dir space and then put in the path. Right? So now we need to join these two together, right, or concatenate them. And that's what we are going to do. For that, we'll have a size t type variable. Let's call that count, which will be initialized with str len of path. Right? So it will give us the length of this string. That will be what count will represent. And then we have char star ptr equal to mem double c py. Now the destination will be str, that's zero, right, zero position, plus four. So that it will be zero, one, two, three for the space. And after that will be placed the path. So str plus four comma path is our source we want to stop when we reach a null character and the number of bytes is what is in count right and then we just say system and we pass in the argument str okay and you can just have a return and now if we run this, if you scroll up, you will see that this was the path we specified. And this is the contents of that directory. Right, so I hope that's clear.
moving on and now we have s printf and you can see from the prototype this function returns an integer and takes this argument a pointer to a string of characters and then we have const char start template which indicates the format command and we talk a little more about the format command later and three dots that you see are the ellipses and we will be talking more about ellipses towards the end of the session and this particular function is identical to printf and therefore the format command right but instead of writing to std out that is to the stream std out you'll be writing the characters into an array right so the output will be in an array return value is equal to the number of characters actually placed in that array so that's the integer returned by sprintf null characters written to mark the end of the string so what we're going to do now is i'm just going to show you a demonstration of this particular function you don't need to write the code so we start with hashtag include stdio.h and then hashtag include stdlib.h and hashtag include string dot h int main now what we are going to do here is we are going to use malloc so char star str equal to malloc right size of char and that's going to be remember characters one byte it's going to be just five bytes and we'll have int i now remember this returns an integer so i equal to s print f and we say str comma now we specify the format command percentage s comma hello then we print f str and you can also print f i so print f percentage d rather just put in a backslash n before that comma i and exit exit success of course remember and we're using a pointer so free str right so now if i run this oh, there's no semicolon there so you can see printed out hello right that's what's in the string str and of course uh, it printed out i as well which is five characters that's correct right one two three four five now what if we add another string here right so we add word and we put in another percentage s right as format for that particular string and now if i run this remember i've allocated just five bytes so will s printf give me an error And you see it doesn't. It's happily written over memory to accommodate the string that we added. And that's a problem, right? It's essentially buffer overrun. So what we'll do is we will now look at another function, which is snprintf. Now this particular function again returns an integer, takes as argument the character pointer, but it also takes size t size, right, indicating the number of bytes to be reported or to be written to the array. And then we have the template. So it's similar to sprintf, but size specifies the maximum number of characters to produce, right, or to be uh, written to the array. The trailing null character is counted towards this limit. So we need to take note of that when we are specifying size. Return value is the number of characters generated minus the null character. Right, so the integer returned will give us a number of characters written to the array minus the null character. If value returned is greater than or equal to size, 
not all characters have been stored in the array but you will see that as for the last point right the value returned in terms of our implementation will be different right so let's go now to code blocks and i'll show you a demonstration of this particular uh, function and here we say char char x equal to malloc size of char into 5 and let me just put a comment here saying sn printf okay, just for your reference and here we we'll say int i of course and now i equal to sn printf passing in the argument so x 5 and now let's put in percentage s percentage s percentage s comma we have hello comma beautiful and third string is word so here we are trying to write three strings to the array but we've allocated just five bytes so what we can do now we can check the return value and as i said the return value is different on our implementation it is minus one so we check for that so if i equal to minus one then what we will do is we will use realloc so x equal to realloc and our pointer is still x but the size is going to be different remember it's new size so size of char that's one byte but we want 22 bytes right why did i take 22 because these characters would be 22 if you for example put in a space here and a space there as well to have a proper readable string okay then we say i equal to sn printf and we pass in the arguments x 22 and then the format and then the same hello beautiful and world right and here after this we just print f x right and you can also print i so print f backslash n percentage d comma i and then of course exit and exit success right so now if we run this let me call in there and try that again it says implicit declaration of print so where have we used print here print f And you can see we have hello beautiful world now what happened to our space that's what we need to check that's because we haven't included it here right so let's do that here as well right so now if we run this we should have that space and there we have it and i is 21 that's because it's minus the null character right moving on now what happens if the size is zero for example well then nothing will be written to the array not even the terminator that is a null terminator 
right and str may be a null pointer right so you got to be aware of that now write code to print a string to an array instead of to a stream make accommodations in your code for a situation where the space in the array is not enough to accommodate all the characters you want to print to the array now i leave this to you because essentially i've already written the code so i'm sure you'll be able to do this on your own now we come to as printf now this particular function returns an integer as well and you can see it takes two arguments there a double pointer that's a pointer to a pointer and it's got the template right which is again a string pointer is similar to s printf calculates the length of the string though so we don't have to allocate memory in advance right like what we did just now it will just calculate the total length of those three strings and then it will allocate memory accordingly Writes the string into the memory allocated returns the number of bytes printed on success and less than zero on failure so essentially negative one now this particular function unfortunately does not work on our implementation right in terms of c and so i've just written the code out for you here this will work on a linux platform so you can try that out if you're working with linux just put in char star x in size and then size equal to a as print f you can see we're not allocating memory here right and uh, we just have as print f x and those two strings one important point to remember is since we are using pointers here we need to free them right so before exiting we need to free x right okay so don't forget that okay moving on variadic functions now the functions we've been writing so far they take a fixed number of arguments right also we need to specify the type right so every call to the functions need, needs to supply the expected number of arguments and the type should be one that can be converted to the specified type right so if we have a function like this you can see that first argument is of integer and then you have a character pointer so we've got to provide these right but there are some functions that can meaningfully accept an unlimited number of arguments you may not know how many arguments are coming in right and that's where variadic functions come in so how do we define and use a variadic function we define the variadic function using an ellipsis which is three dots in the argument list so after we mention the known arguments after the last known argument we will put in those three dots indicating that there could be a variable number of arguments. Use special macros to access those variable arguments. And call the function by writing the fixed arguments, that is the known arguments, followed by the variable arguments. Now let's talk about the special macros that we will use to access these variable arguments. We have VA underscore arg and you can see that takes two arguments VA underscore list arg ptr and type. Now VA underscore list is a type that is defined in a header file and come to which one later. Arg ptr would be our variable argument pointer. Right? That we will use. And then we have type where we specify the type of value that we want returned by VA underscore arg right so the type in terms of the return value of va underscore arg will be the same as specified in the call to va underscore arg so for example if you say double right within the call to va underscore arg then that will be the return value so to trap that return value you'll have to have a variable of type double okay so i hope you understood that then we have v underscore start and that returns a void takes two arguments arc ptr and last required last required would be the last fixed argument or the last known argument to the function what does v a underscore start do well it initializes arc ptr to point to the first variable argument to the function 
what does VA underscore arc do? Well, that points to the second or the subsequent variable argument, right? And every successive call to VA arg or VA underscore arg will point to the next available variable argument. Then we have VA underscore end, and this is more for cleanup, taking as argument arc PTR. So what VA underscore end does, it will indicate that we are finished using arc PTR. And it's important to use VA underscore end because if we don't, we could end up with a stack that is corrupted. Right? So those are the three macros. Now, all of these macros, including the type VA list, are defined in stdarg.h. And so you need to include this header file when you're using variadic functions. General procedure for creating a function that can take a variable number of arguments. The function must have at least one known parameter prior to that variable parameter list. Because remember, the VA start macro requires that last known parameter to be provided as an argument. And therefore, the function must have at least one known parameter. The rightmost known parameter is last parameter, again, used by VA start. Before any of the variable length parameters may be accessed, the argument pointer argptr must be initialized through a call to VA start. The argument pointer, once initialized, points to the first optional or the first variable argument. Optional arguments or variable arguments are accessed through successive calls to VA arg. Right? So every successive call to VA arg will give us access to the subsequent optional or variable argument. A call to VA end indicates we are finished with the argument pointer variable. To ensure that the stack is not corrupted, it is, it is important to call VA end in the function where VA start was invoked. Right? So I hope you've understood this. We will now write some code to return the sum of a series of numbers and we will be using variadic functions. So let's now go to code blocks and we will start a new file. Hashtag include stdio.h and hashtag include stdlib.h and hashtag include, we cannot forget, stdarg.h. So here we have double sum of series and it has num as a fixed or known argument and then we put in the ellipsis to indicate there could be any number of arguments int main and here we have double p right you can call it dub if you like and then dub equal to sum of series and we need to pass in all the arguments so let's put in 5 and then we can put in 0 0.5 0 0.25 0 0.125 So 5 is going to indicate the number of arguments and we're going to provide 5 arguments here, 0 0.625, right, and 0 0.03125. So we have those 5 arguments and then we can just print F, print F, and that's all, of course, exit with exit success and now let's define our function so double sum of series and the parameters would be int num and then ellipsis and within this function we have double sum equal to 
0 0.0, 0 and we'll have another double let's call it type d by p okay and then we have v a list type arg dtr then we call v a start remember v a start is a macro defined in std arg dot h and we pass in the arguments what do we need arg ptr comma the last parameter that's the last fixed argument so that's num for us and now we can have a for loop right so for num should not be equal to zero num minus minus remember num this particular parameter would have the value what five right because we have five arguments coming in and of course here we are counting down so within this for loop we just say type equal to v a arg now remember we need the next variable argument or the subsequent argument and we pass in arg ptr and the type which is double right and then we just say here sum plus equal to type right and we call the end with arg ptr to indicate that we are done with using that argument pointer variable and we can return sum right so it will return that double and print it out so now if we run this oh there needs to be a comma there right so let's run this and there we have that sum okay so i hope this is clear how you can use variadic functions and this ends our session for today in the next session, we will move on to sorts. So till then, take care. Stay safe. Bye.